Welcome along to Tech Tuesday. Well, as you may know, I'm a big fan of 360 cameras. I've already done a review of the amazing Insta360 ONE X. A lot of people asking me what camera should they buy. The reason being, Insta has just released or recently released the ONE R. Now, these cameras are quite a similar price. Which one of these beauties should you purchase? The ONE R or the ONE X? The choice is yours. I'll try and help you. <laughs> Roll the intro. As many of you would have noticed, I've been using the, the 361 X for the last, I guess, six months or so. I've been using this. I've done a separate review of this. I'll link it above. This camera has been through the wars. Uh, let me let me show you. You can see on it there, I've shoe glued the top. The camera slipped down and onto the front, onto the rear tire of a bike and uh, wore through it to the circuit board almost, but it still worked. Christ. Look at that. It's a bloody champ, this thing, isn't it? It fell off the H2 the other week on the way to Weymouth and scratched the lenses, but it still works. It's an incredible, incredibly little robust little camera, this. Ah, oh, the camera's falling off. Whoopsie daisy. The One X is fantastic but it's a bit of a one trick pony. If you just want a 360 camera only, then this, there's nothing wrong with this. It's a perfect little camera. But the One R has a few more tricks up its sleeve. The One R's biggest feature really is the fact that it's modular. With the press of a few buttons, you can take it apart. So the One R really breaks down to its component pieces and you then assemble it in the configuration that you want. So if you want 360, you take the main module, which has the uh, screen on it. You connect the 360 camera, which has you know lens on either side of it, obviously. And then you connect the battery piece, which joins the two together. And there we are. That is then built as a 360 camera. We're now ready to shoot in 360. You don't want to run the 360 camera, take the battery off, pull it apart, put the 4K action camera lens on, reassemble with the screen in the direction you want, like so, turn it on, and you've then got a normal action camera. <laughs> it's pretty clever. And what is even more amazing is this is waterproof up to five meters. Despite it all coming apart like that and, and being modular, it's still waterproof. I don't know how they've done that. Another great feature of this is the preview screen. So you can actually see what you're shooting. You can go through the settings easier. On the One X, there's just a little screen at the bottom there just to sh tell you what you're shooting in. That's about it. Very, very limited. Another great trick to the One R's arsenal is it comes with the ability to connect an external microphone. Now, for us vloggers, us motor vloggers, that's fantastic because it means we can run this as your vlogging camera. As an accessory, there is a, a USB, just a normal, uh, what sort of USB is that? Can't remember, mini, it's not a mini, a micro USB, just a three and a half mil jack which then just plugs into the side of the camera. You can then just plug a microphone directly into that and you've got audio for your helmet. Now I did it, I went out and did a little test of this. So I'm gonna play a little test I did yesterday using this as my helmet camera for a vlog. Roll the clip. This is 4K, 30 frames per second on the vlogging setup with stabilization. So as an action camera, this is one of the first cameras I've seen, other than GoPro, which works with an external microphone. So uh, this is a massive feature, and hopefully that's sounding okay. If I move my head around, up and down, how's the stabilization? Pretty good. 
let's test it out properly and take her off-road. <laughs> I've not got the camera set into low light mode, it's just in normal daytime mode. It has also got a low, a low light mode which really improves the low light performance but hopefully even in this setup it's okay. Back to the studio. The audio from that clip wasn't great, I do agree. I think it might be worth me trying a different microphone. I used a mic which is quite loud on that clip. Now if I'd used my normal Sony mic, which are a little bit quieter, I think it would have been better because it's almost, it was just a bit boomy. It's it too much volume. It's almost like the levels were, were too high for the microphone I was used. So it was okay, it was passable, you know, but it could have been a little bit better. They also make a one inch sensor for this. So this is a, a one inch sensor like what's on a DSLR camera. So it's a, it gives you a much better depth of field. Now, I don't have that. That's another optional extra, but this is, the, this is the beauty of this camera. As they bring out new modules, you can upgrade, you can update it. So it's almost future-proof to a degree. I'm gonna flash up some clips of, re of recordings that I've done, because like, I've had this for six months. So I've got a whole library of 360 footage recorded on this camera. I've had this for about th three months, and two of those months we've been in lockdown. <laughs> so I haven't got a great deal of footage with this. So I'll flash up some examples of footage from the One R compared with footage from the One X. Now, there is really nothing between them in terms of quality. They record at the same 5.7K 30 when you're in 360 mode. And, and you know, the sensor's the same, the, the megabits per second is the same. The only difference really is the color correction is slightly better on the One R. While we're talking about comparisons, battery life slightly better on the One R. The One R is also waterproof. The One X isn't waterproof. The One R is slightly heavier. It's 10 grams heavier than the One X. So if you're mounting on a bike on, a, on, a, on an arm, the weight really does make quite a difference to the way the camera bounces around. So that's 10 grams heavier than the One R. It's also a little bit less aerodynamic to attach to the bike. So it can catch the wind a little bit more than the One X does. The One R has better low light performance. It's actually got a, a night mode, so it does really good low light performance. It also is voice activated as well. The One R will take up to a one terabyte card, whereas the One X will only take up to a 256 megabit card. A couple of things I've noticed with using both of these cameras. If you're recording for longer than 30 minutes, the actual camera's recorder in 30 minute chunks of video. If you go above that 30 minutes, you get a slight delay of about five seconds until the next video file starts. So it's not a seamless recording. You go 30 seconds, stop for five seconds, then automatically start again. So if you're merging footage like I do on my rides where I've got to go, you know, one camera on the helmet, another camera that's be on the bike, it doesn't seamlessly merge and you've got to sort of re synchronize that footage after 30 minutes so that can be a little bit of a pain the wind noise also isn't great there's a lot of wind noise when you're actually riding uh, this is why the external microphone could be quite good on this one if you did want to optimize that wind noise but on the one x it's a lot of wind noise the audio is really almost useless it has to be used with another camera source this is how the onboard audio sounds when you're rolling <laughs> If you plan to take your 360 camera out for the day, you're gonna need extra batteries. Well, the batteries for the One X are actually cheaper than the batteries for the One R because the One R is this integrated design and it forms part of the actual camera. They're more expensive. The One X batteries are 17 pounds. The One R batteries are 30 pounds each. The One X will record for 60 minutes. The One R will record for 70 minutes. So there is a slightly extra bit of battery capacity but the batteries are more than twice as expensive. Both the cameras are able to record on external power sources. So if you don't have enough batteries, you can connect them to an external USB power supply and they will run indefinitely. Now, I've said that's waterproof, haven't I? Five meters, not even splash proof. So if you want to run this in the rain, you need one of these. Now this will take you down to, I think it's 15 meters with one of these, but the problem with it is because it makes the camera wider, the stitching effect isn't quite as good when it's in the case. So just bear that in mind. And the cases, I think it's about 50 pounds, these cases. So by the time you chuck the case on it to make it waterproof, the 1R becomes much better value. What's this fly buzzing about? 
have it. The performance of the 4K module on this, I did some comparisons with my Osmo Pocket, so I'll put some comparisons up on the screen here. This is the Osmo Pocket running at 60K. This is the 1R running at 4K 60. And this is a clip of my Hero 7 running at 4K 30 because it wouldn't run at 4K 60. So going back to my original question, which camera should you buy? Well, I think it's pretty obvious the 1R is a much more versatile camera. You also, it's only £20 more than the X, but you also get the 4K module for that. So you can use it as a normal action camera or as a 360 camera. You can plug in an external microphone and use it as your vlogging camera. I think if I was to play around with different mic setups, I probably might be able to make that audio sound much better. It's versatile, it's modular. You've got the option to add the one inch sensor at a later date if you wanted to use this as like a vlogging camera. It is an amazing piece of kit for just 20 pounds more expensive than the X. The actual editing process is the same for both of these cameras. One thing they've done with the 4K module, the latest firmware, will enables you to record natively in MP4 format. Not when it's in the 360 mode, when you've got the 4K module in, you can record at MP4, but the stabilization isn't as good when you're running it in MP4 format. So to be honest, you're best off running it in the ISV file format. I think the amount of development work that Insta360 are putting into these cameras is pretty clear that they want to be the market leader. Well, I think they are the market leader when it comes to pocket. I still got that fly going around in there. The 360 performance is as best, slightly better than the One X because it's got better low light capability. It's got better color correction. The color correction is better than this. So even from a 360 performance stakes, the R is better. The X is just a 360 camera. That's, that's all it will do. It's, it's a little bit of a one trick pony, but what it does do is extremely good. But for an extra 20 quid, my money would go on the R. Get yourself a 360 camera and join the fun. This is power level one, which is full power. What's she done here? <laughs> I told you I was scared about that. I've never dropped a bike before in my life. Whoa! <laughs> that's it. That's it. <laughs> Listen to me. Never mind getting beat up. Give me this any day of the week. <laughs> oh, that's it.